Where does your passion for the arts come from? I think it comes from being an immigrant. Um, you were born in Holland. I was born in Holland. Uh, and you came to Canada in? I came to Canada when I was uh, in 1948, when I was seven. And I got involved very early on in choirs and choral groups, and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and I became hooked by 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 theater and and uh, and rock music, and uh, and it just it for me the the two the the three great forms of expression uh, were the arts, politics. And and uh, and sports, and uh, and so they the three of them seem to represent my my not journalism, no no the the journalism came from a kind of love of politics right so those three things seem to represent the kind of core of my new country, uh, the the arts and 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 the politics and and the sports I to this day I love all three equally. Uh, I still follow each of them passionately, but uh, but but as time went by, it it became more and more synonymous with uh, with Canada in the same way that Mark Starowitz talks about. Mark Starowitz, you know, Mark Mark Starowitz and I have laughed often about the fact that only Mark Starowitz, as a Polish immigrant, could have in fact done the People's History of Canada. No Canadian could have done that. Uh, you had to have you had to have. Uh, uh, a Polish immigrant uh, do it, and uh, and 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 Starowitz and I and Hirsch often laughed about here are these three immigrants, you know, running the CBC and and, uh, and who care more passionately about Canadian history and the Canadian experience than than uh, than, than you know some of the people who uh, who were born here. Uh, so I I think it has a lot to do with the immigrants uh, uh, the immigrants. Uh, Gratitude to to a country that uh, that uh, took you in and and uh, nurtured you and and uh, and that's and that's continued. And you did a law degree. And I did, you did I, an MBA as well. Yeah, I did a law degree at Dal and I did an MBA at Harvard. And the MBA, as much as the law degree, helped shape your strategy and thinking, or because here you are again at the National Arts Center, revitalized the national institution. Has the MBA played into that? Um, Yes and no. I mean, it it both the MBA and, and the law degree were helpful in terms of um, it gives you it, it it introduces a level of rigor uh, into the way you look at problems, into the way you break down problems, and and the way you approach solutions. Um, the other thing that both of them gave me was a remarkably good bullshit detector. Um, you know when people come in and uh, and they're bullshitting about things to do with law and business, uh, and you can spot the bullshit <laughs> a long way away. And so the bullshit detector is a nice gift that that the Harvard Business School uh, degree gave me. But but mostly it it has to do with with intellectual rigor, uh, and I don't mean. I don't mean being an intellectual. I mean about about the way you you you, you look at issues and problems and and uh, and 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 the way you try to introduce solutions. But but none of it was effective for me because because I'm much more comfortable on the intuitive side of my uh, nature than I am on the analytical side. So so uh, the the running joke at the National Arts Center and has been for many years is has been our uh, left brain right brain approach to everything we do and uh, and and it's true so you you give tremendous weight to the intuitive side of all of it uh, the soft side and uh, but you do it in a kind of hard-headed uh, business way to make it all possible and that's been probably at the heart of of the stuff the National Arts Center has been done and and all of us talk about the left brain, right brain. Uh, you do if if it's if it's one to the exclusion of the other, uh, it's nowhere near as successful. If just a sort of final question here, if, if we're sitting here and we put three people at the table, you know, there's a young arts administration student from Ryerson and the University of Alberta acting student here and a dance person here from Dalhousie, whatever, and they're all about to leave and enter the world of Canadian arts to to build it, to manage it, to create it, to write it, whatever. 
and you had three minutes with them, what would you say to them? I wouldn't need three minutes. I would say, get on with it. it you're about to embark on the greatest adventure of your life, and, uh, and, uh, and the sooner you get to it, the better, because it's, it be, it's going to be fabulous. Uh, you know, again, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a complete optimist about all of this. I, uh, I think, I think it, for uh, those young dancers, the young choreographer, the young actor, it's going to be a great time, and, uh, and you can do something magical with this country. And did you really room next to Bobby Kennedy? No. <laughs> no, but, but he, he, he was my, he, he was and is my greatest political hero. Did you know? No, no. Oh, I, you didn't, okay. I, That's I, a myth. That's it a is, a, it is a myth. myth. I covered the 68 campaign as a young journalist. Uh, met Nixon, uh, met all, all the guys <coughs> running. Uh, and, uh, and, I was, uh, and I was already then a huge Bobby Kennedy fan. And I was with the Stanfield campaign in Atlantic Canada uh, uh, when Bobby Kennedy was killed in Los Angeles. And, uh, and it, it set me for such a loop that I left the Stanfield campaign. I rented a car and just took off driving around Atlantic Canada for 48 hours. Cause I, and then I, then I heard uh, Frank Mankiewicz announce that he was dead. And uh, it was kind of the end of my, you know, the, the end of my innocence. More than, much more than John Kennedy. So did you really run out to the tarmac in 1964 in Winnipeg and the, the Beatles were on I the did, aircraft? I did, I did, I did. I was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a great moment because I was working as a young, young reporter at uh, the CBC Winnipeg newsroom and, and I said, uh, I said to the guys in the newsroom, you know, the Beatles are coming through the airport and they all said, who the hell are the Beatles? And, I said, well, they're this young British rock group, and uh, anybody want to go out there? And they said, <laughs> so I said, well, how about me? Can I go out? Sure, sure. So I went out and uh, and and uh, and I chatted them up at the uh, the Winnipeg the Winnipeg airport, and uh, they were on their way to, I think, on their way to either the first or the second Ed Sullivan appearance, which at which point it all took right. off, and uh, and it was kind of fun to do. And you got it on camera? Oh yeah, you know, I interviewed. I interviewed. Uh, uh, I think I interviewed Lennon and uh, and uh, uh, and they were, you know, they were just fooling around. They just had a good time, and they, they you couldn't ask them any serious questions. You asked them a question, and they just fooled around. But but you got a flavor of a group that that was about to be be launched. <laughs>